Um, now I understand that we have Andreas on from Greece. Uh, they're going to switch over the cable so we can get a visual. Good morning, Andreas. Are you there? Nope. Okay. Uh, they'll switch it over, and we have the Skype connection already done. Let me just preface Andreas' appearance by uh, letting you know that, yeah, we've all heard about a lot of the economic problems in Greece right now, and we've been discussing those off and on and the impact on entrepreneurship. However, Andreas recently made a trip to Shanghai, China, on behalf of the Young Entrepreneur Society. Good morning, sir. Good morning, how are you? Okay, how are you? You're looking bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, very nice. Thank you very much. Um, so, Andreas is going to talk this morning primarily about his trip to Shanghai, mm -hmm. uh, what you did, what you learned, and what you think are some outcomes. So, take it away. Thank you very much, Les. Uh, thank you very much to all people and at the Broganeris Breakfast. I cannot uh, see you. I don't have video, but uh, we can I, will try, I, I will try to use my imagination. Uh, my trip in uh, Shanghai was almost uh, one month ago. It was uh, prepared from the Kaufman Foundation. Kaufman Foundation is one of the global founders of an initiative, we call it Global Entrepreneurship Week. And uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Week initiative started uh, in 2008 all over the globe. Uh, every March, we participate, the countries that we organize one week devoted for the Global Entrepreneurship Week, we participate and we discuss the problems and the challenges and the opportunities in order to design the next year Global Entrepreneurship Week. The first meeting was in Kansas City on the premises of Kaufman Foundation. The second year, the same meeting was in uh, Dubai, and now the meeting was in uh, China, Shanghai. We discussed uh, about the Global Entrepreneurship Week that we will all of us organize between 14 and 20th of November. Already, we have the participation of 103 countries. And we estimate that in uh, three years, three, four years, almost every country from all around the earth will be uh, will participate one way or the other with an activity during the Global Entrepreneurship Week. The major now uh, mission and vision of Global Entrepreneurship Week is the following. First of all, to stimulate the, the young generations on the pathways of entrepreneurship, so to unleash their ideas, to unleash their creativity, and start creating, let's say, business uh, endeavors. Major issue is the unemployment of youth that we have uh, in all around the world, especially because of the technology unemployment, because the technology creates unemployment every day. Second, we need to support the startup businesses in all over the world because by a research that was prepared from the Kaufman Foundation, we have as a result that businesses with an age up to five years old, they create the maximum amount of jobs. So job creation is maximized from companies up to five years old of age. And these startup uh, companies, they have two problems. One is the access to capital, because in Europe, especially now with the crisis, and of course in Greece, even worse, we have almost zero risk financing and risk capital. We have no venture capitals. We have no business angels networks. And the banks right now, because of the crisis, they don't even give loan, even with collateral. So for a young person with an excellent idea, it's almost extremely difficult to create a, a new venture, especially a knowledge-based business that needs capital for the first two or three years. Andres, Second, 
Let yes. Me, let, me, let, me, let me put some numbers to exactly what Andreas was discussing. Um, this is a news release from an organization called Eurostat, mm -hmm. and this is from March of 2011, which says that the youth unemployment rate, which is under 25 years old, was 19.8% in the Euro area and 207 in the Euro 27. Now, this is, this is down just a couple of ticks from 2010, but you can see the magnitude of the problem with a 20% unemployment rate in the under 25 age group. Go ahead. Just to give you an, an additional number, uh, specifically in Greece, unemployment of youth with an age range 15 to 44 years old, it is almost 37%. So imagine that the problem is quite uh, uh, tough for Greece and all around the Europe. However, despite the difficulties and the problem of liquidity on the market, we have many positive changes. First of all, change number one, the the public sector is becoming smaller and becomes more efficient. Second, young generation, they start thinking that their future is not only to go to a big corporation or to ask for a business on the public sector, but to create also something on their own. We, we never had that uh, five years or six years ago. And third, the business is now in Greece and in Europe. For first time, they start thinking that the domestic market, it is Europe and not just the local city or the country that they exist. This is something uh, very easy to understand for you that you live in the United States. But for someone that he lives in Germany or someone that he lives in Greece or in Italy, we never thought the member countries of Europe that we can do businesses at European level. So now, despite the problems of the European economy, we have many you know, positive changes in the attitude of the European society. And also European um, Commission did many you know, changes. You saw that, that, that special mechanism that they, they invented in order to save uh, Greece to save Portugal and other countries that they had financial difficulties. We never had that support from European Commission as a country before. Is this part of the uh, negotiations that are going on Europe-wide? I mean, just as an example, the unemployment rates for the same age group in Germany is 8.2% mm -hmm. and in Netherlands at 6.9%. So there's a tremendous disparity in the mm -hmm. employment numbers between what would be more the ingrained countries in the uh, early stage economy and the non-ingrained countries. Is this part of the overall negotiation to strengthen the emerging market countries? Yes, first of all, from economic point of view, they, they have to support euro currency. So they cannot leave any member country to default because we operate with euro. So if they do not support the member countries, they do not support euro. And I mean the strong countries. Second, because less is exactly as you mentioned. Some countries, they have a huge unemployment rate and some others, they have a small one. So because we never operate as Europe. We had Europe just as a union a legal and economic union, but never as a real union in all aspects. So now they try to create mechanisms to balance all these you know, inequalities between the member countries and to give to the member countries the same opportunities. We don't want just to, to give us money because we have debt. We want to have the same opportunities like German, like Italy, like France. Are there companies in the emerging market countries such as Greece and, and, and Spain, Portugal, 
seeking early stage funding from the more developed countries and how is that funding being achieved and is it going to work out long term? Yes, for the moment there are a, a, a good number of companies in uh, the you know developing countries of Europe, let's say Greece, in Portugal, Spain, but there is no risk financing, not only in our countries, but in Europe in general. European economy is very risk averse. We know that happens here as well. I'd also like to ask you, when you're in Shanghai, what was the mood of entrepreneurship as you saw it in China? <laughs> it just to give you a number, in Shanghai, the growth was 10% every year. 10%. Many 10% in Shanghai, the economic growth every year. The government tries to find ways to, to you know, to 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 control a little bit that 10% growth every year. You know, it was interesting. A couple of months ago, there was a Kaufman report from mm -hmm. China that mm -hmm. said that entrepreneurship is the number one aspiration for China's youth, where as little as five years ago, if you weren't employed by the government, you were deemed to be a failure. I assume that mood is changing, and it's evident. Yes, and I think that in uh, two, three years, we will have the same in Greece and in Europe in general. However, in China specifically, I saw many venture capital funds and business angels from the United States that they already moved in China to support uh, innovative businesses that they exist there. So as you can see also the trend that many American capital, a lot of money, they move in China for uh, investments and speculation. Interesting. Any questions for Andreas? Harv, let me get you the microphone. Hello, Andreas. Thank you for your reports. Uh, do you have an organization or a group that is facilitating entrepreneurship in Greece? Because I think if you don't, if you had one that had a couple of successful flagship projects, uh, a lot of other Greek financiers would jump on board. Yes, you are right. No, for the moment, uh, the last 10 years, we created, as uh, Les uh, explained to you, the Young Entrepreneurs Society. That means a network, an association of young entrepreneurs that connects, <coughs> I'm sorry, young entrepreneurs of Greece and connects them also in Europe in order for them to have networks at the European market, to have the feeling that the domestic market of their operation, it is Europe. Now, another organization that we created uh, almost four years ago is the Academy of Entrepreneurship. And actually, we made a collaboration this uh, the previous August with uh, the Hudson Valley Center for Innovation and LES to support you know, American businesses that they would like to penetrate in Europe and, of course, vice versa, European businesses that they want to expand in the U.S. market, either, you know, selling products or services or receiving also financing. Uh, formally, we do not have a public or a private organization that supports truly the businesses, at least in Greece. We have some incubators, but they do not work the same transparency and the same efficiency like the incubators that you have in the uh, United States. Just to give you another information, uh, last week I had a short trip in, uh, in Portugal and actually in southwest part of Portugal where we sign a protocol of cooperation with Innovrigio. Innovrigio is a public organization, tries to support the innovation of uh, five, six different counties of South Portugal. They have already polytechnic institutes, they have already incubators, but if you go to the incubators, the businesses that they are there are very few, so that means they, do, they cannot select businesses to enter these incubators. And second, there is not risk financing in order for the businesses that finally will be in the incubator to be supported for growth. 
at European or global markets. Now, interestingly enough, uh, you may remember about uh, two months ago at this breakfast, we had our friend Tobias on from Ireland, and Tobias and I have been communicating regularly. And interestingly enough, the Irish government provides early stage capital to qualified uh, companies, and which is almost entirely risk capital, which is then matched by either a VC fund, private investors, angel groups, or corporate entities. Anything like that on the horizon? Uh, as I can see, not in the moment. I think that they have to, but uh, it is our vision, not the politician's vision. Any other questions? Carolyn. Good morning, it's Carolyn. Uh, a couple morning, questions Carolyn. about Shanghai. Yes. Um, was part of what was going on there an opportunity for entrepreneurs from around the world to connect and do joint projects, joint international work? And the second part was part of what was going on an opportunity to connect with investors? I'm yes. curious what was happening in Shanghai. Yes, both, both situations were part of Shanghai's uh, meeting. First of all, uh, business people that they had something strong to compete in uh, China's market, they could make collaboration. And also, a lot of uh, venture capital and business angels, they already exist in Shanghai, so they could support them. Now, to be honest, not many businesses from Europe, and at least from my contacts, they are capable for the moment to expand beyond the national market. So our proposal to the government, because we, we try to influence first the Greek government and also the European Commission, is before supporting businesses with any public or private money, we have to invent and to create a very transparent mechanism of the selection process. And we do not have that. In Greece, we have many, you know, board of experts, university professors and, uh, you know, other public officials that they decide which businesses are competitive. But at the end of the day, these, not, these businesses are not the winners of the market. And they sometimes they get financing and in three or five years, they do not exist anymore. So the problem is not just to go to a, a new market or to make connections is to have the right idea with a competitive advantage that you can have success in a new market. Uh, Andreas, um, are, are there any uh, Greece uh, government uh, policies, um, in other words, uh, extra favoritism to unions which um, continue to hold Greece uh, back, with re more so than Germany and the Netherlands? Yes, uh, we have uh, some obstacles because, as you said, the trade unions are very strong in Greece. However, because of the presence of IMF and European Commission financial support, we have to follow a specific uh, uh, route, guidelines, because otherwise they, they do not give us the next installment for, you know, the the payments of the public sector mainly. So uh, part of these reforms are, first of all, to decrease as, as fast as possible bureaucracy for businesses. That was one of the main uh, obstacles in the past. Uh, I remember two months ago, the prime minister announced that you can create a business in one day, one-stop shop. That was something very, very new for uh, Greece. Uh, second, uh, we have many fights with the trade unions uh, in the streets. Sometimes you can see them on the news also. But uh, at the end of the day, it is dead end. Even if a new government comes, uh, they have to follow the same rules. Otherwise, we cannot take the installment from uh, IMF and European Commission uh, support. Any other questions? Andreas, as always, thank you so much. And uh, give the baby a kiss. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of you this morning.